Well, I said it's no point uh, in you being interested in trying to be accepted into a family that doesn't really want you there. You don't know what's being said behind your back. You don't know what's going on when you're not there. You can tell by the fruit. You can tell by the way if you're, you know, if you're not being invited to somebody's house or something like that, obviously there's concerns about something. <laughs> Whatever they may be, you haven't got the um, you're not welcome. <laughs> if you're not being invited there, you're not welcome. So why aren't you welcome? Well, there's somebody there that don't want you there. And there's nothing that the person you're with can do about it or there is nothing they are going to do about it. It's as simple as that. They're not prepared to do anything about it. So they don't care. I guess there's an element of stress related to that, but um, the last woman I was with never said, oh, I'm concerned that you can't come to my place. And she never said that you can't come to my place because my sons don't want you there either. That, that, that's a way of trying to deal with something by doing nothing. If we ignore it, that fixes it, but that's not the case. That's not the case. Ignoring things has a place. Being silent about things has a place. But it only has a place. We'll just let this freight train go past. With all this graffiti and all the rest of it. When you're being left out, when you're being ignored, there's two schools. One school is play it to your advantage. Don't worry about resolve. Take the supply while you can. Use that person up. And when the when the when things come to a head, then that's it. The problem with that is it leaves you, get it, scarred. It leaves you injured. That never works. There are users out there that think that's doing them good, but they age before their time. They have trouble that other people do not usually have consequentially in their conscience. Um, and there's all other ramifications associated with that that your normal Joe Spong doesn't have to endure. You see people put themselves through things that they don't need to. If somebody's coming to your place and spending the weekend there, you might want to settle for that. If you were once going to their place and now you're not, obviously something's happened. A family member doesn't like you anymore. Um, somebody doesn't want you there. I've had instances where I've had to confront issues. One was, oh look, there's been too many. Um, but confront issues on the, by the way of the partner and her side, not my side, her side. Um, and it hasn't washed over very well. So I guess just being silent keeps the peace, I suppose. Some people are worn out with arguing. Quite frankly, my family members that give me the shits, if they push it, I just tell them to go. I just tell them to leave the premises. 
I don't care where they're going to go or what they're going to do if they haven't got the respect to appreciate my dignity in my relationship well they ain't going to be staying under my roof they can go do something else um, and this is the problem that we've got because a lot of parents today are making their children the parent and the parents becoming the child. I've seen this on a couple of occasions now where, here yeah, mate, here yeah, mate, where the parent has given too much authority to this child. Maybe they've said something along the lines of you're, you're the man of this house or you know, you're the woman of this house, something of that nature which seemed convenient at the time but what you've got to understand is you're programming that person to believe that they really are the man of that house or the woman of that house so if somebody comes along who wants to be a partner and you want to have get it as a partner then that's going to be conflictive because now they're no longer the man of the house um, because that's not going to look right because it isn't right when somebody comes along that's outside the family um, there's a lot of mix up now there's a lot of mess there's a lot of enmeshment enmeshment is probably the easiest way to look at it once you start using words like emotional incest and um, words like that uh, can become very offensive it's hard hard for people to swallow that's probably why that last bloke didn't like me because I told him he was mummy's boy um, and they were she was their wife they were her little surrogate husbands they doted around on each other and all this rubbish it was terrible but this is what happens and unfortunately when you're on the end of it it just doesn't end well it doesn't end well for anybody even after you're gone um, because of the problem and the problem is their solution because the enmeshment always wins you'll never win against enmeshment don't try just remove yourself from the toxicity and say thank you very much because they'll go back to the enmeshment. That's their safeguard. That's how they um, give themselves security. That's what they do to give themselves identity. They can't fail because they go back to the enmeshment. If you are able to tolerate it and willing to put up with it, then they'll let you. But if you start collapsing and start calling things out and they, th they realize you're becoming aware of the problem, that's gonna work against you. That's not gonna go well for you because they're gonna wanna protect the enmeshment. Covert emotional incest will win. I'm telling you, it will always win. It will drain your life. These people are conditioned to need each other. They're conditioned to want each other. They're conditioned to return to each other. When things fail, they reunite. When things fail, they re-embrace because it's a relationship that's intimate and sexless. It's a sexless, intimate relationship between family members. When you're gone, they'll laugh about you. You'll be forgotten. They'll have somebody else possibly the next day. You don't know with these people. It's all over the place. Everything's all right one minute, going downhill the next. 
everybody's high one minute, everything's gone down. I've never seen so much drama and these people say they want peace and they want to protect it. I don't think, look, and I know it sounds sad, but I don't think many of these people even know what peace is. I just don't think they know what peace is. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He will make sure that you have your peace. Therefore, having been justified by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and all the attributes and benefits of his finished work, we have peace with God. We have peace with God through Christ. Does that mean we have peace with people? No, that takes resolve and a lot of people just aren't willing to resolve themselves to have that peace. They're just not going to make the resolve. And that'll hamstring the relationship, it'll hamstring you psychologically, it'll bind you up, you need to decide that toxic relationships aren't for you. You need to be able to identify when these things are going on. If there's been a duration of time or the relationship's gone backwards, you're in probably a toxic relationship and they'll leave you in it as long as you're willing to put up with it. So if you're willing to put up with it, well, guess what? You'll have a toxic relationship. If you're not, you can come back to yourself Reframe yourself, get your life on track, um, start to rebuild, let those people go, they'll go on without you, you go on without them and come back into your health, happiness and peace.